when I was at my height, pops was still strong as crap. And the point of it was is like, no, you don't get to just jump onto this. Like you have to want this. You have to want to be around this so much. And, and you see the little interactions and how this stuff works. And he'd later say, he's like, the best thing you ever did was not let me lift with you guys. Yeah. Because I had to understand what that meant, what that badge was when you're finally led in the group. We know you're and now you were held accountable. You're held accountable as everyone in the group. I don't care if you squat 200 pounds or 800 pounds. You're a part of the group. And just like Mike Judge said 20 years before, if this guy misses a rep, somebody has to make it up because this is how this is going to roll. And like that's the stuff that was awesome and exciting. And that, you know, when you get that group that gels together and everyone wants to outlift each other, of course, but then it was also a group it was a group win if someone smashed a big weight and it was a group loss if someone missed one, you know, that was, that was the thing. Right. And, you know, I look, I mean, it's so funny. I mean, pops, he's 70, almost 71 years old. He had a, he had to get his um, gallbladder taken out about a month ago. Oh, and um, yeah. Yeah. He's again, did he's he take rescued. it out himself? He was trying. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to go to the hospital. I'm like, but dude, something's wrong. He's like, ah, but I think I hit myself with a kettlebell or something. I'm like, yeah, man, maybe let's just get you on in there. Like you've had a fever for three days. Let's see what's mm -hmm. up. You know, uh, so he had a you know emergency surgery, got out, and um, they told him he had like three or four weeks before he could lift anything over five pounds. It's been four or five weeks at this point. And I was like, he goes, yeah, I kind of sore today. I was like, oh, what's going on? He's like, ah, I just lifted yesterday. And he goes, I went up 50 in the squat though. And I'm like, of course you did, 71-year-old man. And he's like, yeah, I squatted 200. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm like, you had surgery. I was like, how's those incisions doing? He's like, ah, oh, they're fine. But it was like no change. There, there's literally like he had to go to the hospital for a couple of days and get some stuff done. And then it was – then he was surprised. He's like, I was kind of sore. But I did, you know, I'm doing rows again. And, like, you know, I'm like you just – he's just about that life. You know, people mm -hmm. use that term very – loosely or inaccurately in many ways but it's like well they use it just very uh um generally or like you know like i always think like that's a comment that you use very sparingly uh yeah. you yes know, the uh and the the funny thing about your pop and I, I literally just had this conversation with my mom about an hour ago um people and i think i stole this from somebody but i'll i'll own it if somebody gives it to me like people uh you know don't stop training because they get old. They get old because they stop training. And that was the one thing. Like, so um, at Zangus' funeral, uh, I guess he had had a, he was, had since been divorced, was living in an apartment, whatever, but he has, he had his weights in there and uh, he had a heart attack on the bench, underneath the bench. Wow. So they came well, that's, in. That's what Pops has said. Every, he's like, and he I was pinned go underneath weight and, you know, was fucking dead and bloated. And so, like, they were telling the story at his funeral. And like, you know, like people, like my mom was like, was, do you think that was in bad taste? I'm like, no, not at all. Like, that's probably how the man wanted to go out. And, uh, you know, like, like that was what he loved to do. Yeah. And the fact that he was in his kitchen bench pressing and he had a bench in his kitchen is even more fucking awesome. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, you remember, uh, Brad and Brad and Wade Gillingham, uh, the Gillingham brothers, I mean, Brad's a, I think he's pulled 400 kilos in competition, like more than any other person ever, wow. but his, his dad gail gillingham who was a all-star nfl super monster he ended yeah, up no, I dying. Remember the name. yeah he i mean he was one of the first guys in the nfl that were like really really strong strong and like lifting guys and i think he was a packer and um he yep. ended up dying Packers, yep. yeah and he ended up dying a few years back um in the squat rack doing like 700 something pound partials at like 65 or 70 years old damn you know, and, and you know, talking to Brad and I mean, you know, all three of his sons have been professional strongmen, professional weightlifters, this and that. And all of them are like, well, that's how the old man would have wanted it, you know, and you're like, you yeah, know, but, probably. Uh, so. But that's that physical culture thing. I mean, <laughs> they um, like my dad never lifted weights. He thought training was stupid. And right. uh, but I, I don't know what was inherent about me. And uh, I like I, I think about this way too often. But um when I was, uh, so like we were beach kids, man, we were like in junior lifeguards and went to the beach and like went surfing. And like, that was what we did in middle school. And I think I've, I've told the story before, but, um, we were at the lifeguard station and we were actually practicing CPR it was probably like maybe 10 or 11. And, uh, so they, they had this bitching program in Southern California called junior lifeguards and starts at 10. I think I started when I was nine cause I just lied or my mom lied for me. 
Um, but it was basically they train you to be a lifeguard. You show up, you run, you swim, you paddle, and you basically just train for the entire day like a lifeguard. And then the idea is that you start at 10, and then this is kind of like their mentor program. And then when the kids are 16, 17, 18, they become lifeguards. And so this wow. is like the program, and it's like all over Southern California. They have it up where we lived in the South Bay in Orange County. And it's like to this day when we were uh, in Orange County, when I lived down there, I would see the kids – uh, you know, they would either, we always wear blue shorts, Orange County wears red, but the white shirts and I'd see the kids on their bikes and skateboard. And it was like, man, it like put a smile on my face that kids were still doing junior lifeguards. Yeah. So we were at the, at the aid station or like the lifeguard station, we were practicing CPR and, uh, it was pretty close to where like the strand was, which is like the, the, um, um, like strip of concrete that everybody walks on and rides bikes. And I remember like hearing people like making noise and fussing and we thought like there was like a, a fight or something and we just like couldn't figure out what the fuck this like this noise and these people were like kind of running a little bit almost like Godzilla was coming. And all of a sudden we see this dude walking and he's wearing like a short pair of gray shorts. Uh, he has a tank top that's a string tank top and the dude's chest was so big that like you could have put a Coke on it. And this dude was just strutting down this fucking uh, deal. And we were like, we just got up and we walked over and started following him. And this dude with huge quads just fucking yoked. He had a big beard, big gold chain around his neck. And we were like, like we thought it like was the Incredible Hulk or somebody. Right. And he fucking turns around and stomps at us. And we were like, <laughs> like this. Uh, it was uh, it was Lyle Alzado. No way. Yeah, it was Lyle Alzado. Oh, that's his awesome. fucking biggest. And he lived in our town. Um, we used to see him driving around in his Rolls Royce convertible fucking trying to hit kids. He's just a fucking asshole. Um, trying to hit but, kids. Oh, yeah. Dude, he totally almost hit me and my brother and our buddies on our bicycles one time. We were like, like basically like rode our bikes across the car, a crosswalk, and he fucking like almost took us out. And we knew it was him because he had a black, uh, like a black Rolls Royce convertible and we had black <laughs> wheels. It was all black and he had a Raiders thing on it. Oh, so douchey for the 80s. Um, sounds but, pretty awesome. Though. Yeah, that sounds amazing now. Uh, <laughs> but seeing him... Like I, I was like, I, I don't know why that, like I want to lift weights. Like that was like the yeah. moment in my head when I saw that dude, the fact that like people were running from him, like, like a Japanese tourist look, running from Godzilla as this dude was just strutting. And like, I was like, holy shit. Like I didn't even yeah. know people could look like that. And I remember thinking isn't like, it so, isn't it so like it burns that into your mind? Like I remember as a kid, you're, you're watching like the, I think it was WWE at that time, WWF, maybe I don't remember what WWF. And I uh, remember Nikita Koloff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just super jacked. And I remember like all the, like all the, the, the popular, like the rock and roll expresses and all that. I remember I've been my dad, like, but look at the traps on Nikita Koloff. That guy actually lifts. And that was like his favorite dude. Right. Yeah. And then of course, like basically Goldberg is just a nineties version of Nikita Koloff. Yeah. But I remember as like a 10 year old kid, my dad, you know, we watched wrestling and Nikita Koloff was the guy <clears throat> and he was showing me pictures of Pizarenko mm. doing bowls and then telling me Bill Kazmaier stories. And he told me a story about when, and I, I think it was 1980, he was at, I think the, that was when he was at the Playboy uh, club in, in uh, Jersey uh, for World's Strongest Man when Mike Bridges squatted a grand on the pool deck. Um, and he said he was sitting in this restaurant and he said all of a sudden he could just hear like, like, um spoons and forks just dropping out of people's hands and he was like he says like a movie you just hear this you look up and he said it was literally people fall like this and their their forks were falling out of their hands as bill kazmaier yeah. came through the restaurant with the tank top on 1980 and he's like we'd never seen a human carry that much mass and he said it just literally and you remember people weren't there for world strongest man they were like at the playboy club like normal 1970s 80s dudes and chicks and he's like, he walked through and he goes, I've never seen it before or since. People literally dropped their forks. They were so just, they did, they were in awe of the human that could look like that. I'm going back, I'm a loaded freight train and I'm right on track. I 